Hey guys, welcome to my channel, David Madison, The Guardian, where I practice telekinesis and I talk about self-mastery. In fact, I am a mentor starting my own business. So, um, let's see, look at that guy. I start practicing and, and moths start coming around me, insects and spiders and stuff. Okay, so the last video I did, I was moving, I was moving this piece of paper here. This is actually a piece of uh, paper bag. We're in the biggest uh, garage. So I'm gonna start running. Took me that long to get out. Now, see this? This right here isn't moving, so no wind, okay? Now, I just had a major breakthrough where I was able to turn this. This is much stiffer than the bag. And when I turned it, I actually started playing with the leaf a little bit. I had it like a little bit further like this, and then it slid like that. And as it slid, just, you know, a few seconds later, this thing wobbled and then it kind of turned. So the next thing I'm gonna try, is I want to see if I can get something that's even heavier to move. So I'm going to focus on kind of the floppiest part of this. So I'm becoming very, very, very sensitive to any change whatsoever. As you practice telekinesis, this happens. Your observation skills just get sharper and sharper and sharper. So as I'm looking, I'm noticing that this is discolored, at least from my vantage point, it's, it's colored like a it started in front of my eyes, it started to seem like the color was bleeding, almost as if like I could see through it, that I could see the orange behind it. It's weird. Now, you, when you first start out, that won't seem to make a difference to you. You'd, you'd be like, yeah, well, so what? Who cares? But what I've learned about telekinesis is that it's the smallest things and your intuition leads you. And so if something seems off, if something seems like it's glitching or something seems like it's changing color, changing texture, changing motion, changing uh, brightness, contrast, anything changing is a sign, okay? And you have to take it. You have to take in a hundred percent faith that that the energy is changing, and that's why you're seeing something in a different way. Because your brain it has something called the reticular activating system, and the reticular activating system, called, you know, for short, is RAS. It's basically a screening mechanism. 
because your brain doesn't want to pay attention to everything that would be overloaded. It only wants to pay attention to the things, most of, mostly the things that allow you to survive. But you can train your brain to take in more information or to become observant of that information. And so a perfect example is um, I heard this from Mel Robbins. She's one of those pretty fantastic people. So on YouTube, I heard this from Mel Robbins. She was talking about having a red Acura. And she says, imagine that you just bought a, a red Acura. Right after you buy it, you might not have seen red Acuras around, right? But after you bought it, you'll start noticing they're everywhere. And you're like, where did they come from? And the thing is, they've been there the whole time. You know, it's like, if you think about it, at least metaphysically, everything that you want is in this present moment. It's in every point of space and time, which is, it's a weird thing. But what I believe is you shift consciousness and you move to like almost like a parallel universe where stuff is slightly different. So in this parallel universe, right, you have a red Acura and maybe it's parked over there. In the slightly different universe, now it's parked in that parking spot. So by using quantum mechanics and this idea of quantum jumping, um, which I believe you do anyways, but the changes are so slight that it's something like, it looks like your hand moving, right? So movement isn't a real thing. Movement is an illusion, okay? And check it out. You see how this this thing when I said that this thing started moving it's because I believe that it's speaking to me it's saying that's the truth man you're speaking the truth speak more truth man So I believe the universe, you know, you say something and, and somebody whistles, or you say something and a, a horn blares, right? That's the universe speaking to you. And if you're cynical, you may be like, well, I don't believe in that. But I mean, look at what's happening here, okay? I'm not saying I have all the answers, because I certainly don't. Um, but our universe is much more complex than we give it credit for. And so we limit ourselves. We limit what we believe is possible based on our experience or lack of experience, right? We basically have a brain that says, okay, I remember these patterns and these patterns in my imagination code can go conceivably here, here, and here. But anything beyond that, the brain's like, well, I've never experienced that before, so, you know, I can't rely on that, right? And that's actually supposed to, that mechanism is supposed to keep you safe. But it also keeps you limited. Do you understand? Like, it's not that that mechanism is wrong, but it's applied, it's, it's applied too broadly. And when you want to break out of the matrix, right? You want to break out of um, the illusion. You want to move beyond. You want a quantum jump. You want to have a quantum leap towards you know, 10x your results, 100x, 1,000x, 1,000,000x, 
your results. That's going to come from changing your perspective. As you change your perspective, you will, you will be introduced to tools that you didn't have when your perspective was limited. Let me see, now that I've built up a little energy, I want to see if I can move this. Oh, by the way, okay, I just want to tell you, there is, uh, there is a guy named, I think like Mac Ritchie or something, or maybe it's McDonald, but he did a, um, now look at this, this bag isn't moving at all, okay? But that's moving all over the place, because that's where my energy is. Now let's see if I can affect the bag. Anyways, the guy uh, named Mac Ritchie or John Mac Ritchie or something like that. So he wrote a book. Actually, he wrote a free kind of pamphlet or something. And it's called The Eight Extraordinary Meridians. <gasps> and I would highly suggest that you read this if you're into Qigong. He talks about like when you smile you have meridians um, that run up the sides of your face. And when you smile, you connect like to your third eye and then you can start filling, almost like filling a bowl. You can start filling the bowl of the third eye. And then you can take that energy and you can send it down into your yin organs it's either your yin or your yang organs, but um, it's a healing thing for like your heart and your spleen and your lungs and everything. But there's actually a connection that happens when you slightly smile. And so if you're having trouble connecting Try the slight smile. In fact, there's a, uh, there's a concept called the inner smile that the Buddha is like kind of famous for talking about. So try that. Try feeling that inner smile until, until it's almost like you can't take it in anymore and you need to break out into a smile, right? It starts from the inside and it builds. Well, that is energy. Emotion is, emo is, is energy in motion. See how that bag's not moving at all? But that is. All right, I'm done, guys, with this. Um, <clears throat> like, subscribe, and share. Click on the bell notification so that when new videos come out, as soon as they come out, you're alerted. And if somebody comments, you can respond to them right away. Okay. Peace, love, and light, my friends. Be well.